My house is slowly becoming a jungle. <laughs> hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare and sometimes self-care. So if that's your vibe, please consider hitting subscribe. And today I want to talk about the skin microbiome versus the skin barrier. So you may be wondering, you know, I know about the skin barrier. I know that that's like the root of all like healthy skin, but what about this microbiome? You know, what do I need to know about that? Is that where we really should be focusing our, our tension right Right now do I need you know a skincare that is going to feed a healthy microbiome which one is better for healthy skin and I'm gonna tell you right now like short answer it's both you actually need to focus on both long answer which is this video it's actually more than just those two things there's actually three things that you want to focus in on if you're really focusing on healthy strong skin the skin barrier and the microbiome are just parts of it and they don't actually exist in separate bubbles they are all related to each other so if you are so ready to expand the conversation around the skin barrier and the microbiome give the video a big thumbs up and let's dive right in when you're thinking about healthy skin, I want you to actually think about three things. And the first one is your skin microbiome. The second is your acid mantle. And the third is your lipid layer, what we really do traditionally refer to as the moisture barrier. So you want to keep all three of these in mind when you're building effective skincare routines for healthy and strong skin. So let's talk about the skin microbiome first, because you've probably been hearing a lot about this recently. Like I mentioned, it's definitely one of the newest trends in skincare and you're probably already seeing a brand's marketing on skincare that's going to help your microbiome or offer pre and probiotics for your skin so what is a skin microbiome well basically it's just communities of microorganisms living in your skin and generally it is made up of good microorganisms that help keep everything in balance now you've heard of the gut microbiome there's a lot of information around Around that we're all pretty familiar with how that helps with digestion and help with inflammation and immune response and that's kind of how your microbiome works on your skin so when you have a healthy skin microbiome it really helps to fight off bacteria this is especially important if you do have acne a healthy microbiome can help to reduce the instances of acne on the skin it can also help to reduce inflammation which is also important for acne but it's also an important component of well aging, you definitely want to keep inflammation on the skin at a very low level um, because high amounts of inflammation can actually uh, over time destroy your collagen. Now it also helps with wound healing and it can be particularly helpful if you do suffer with atopic dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, or if you just have overly sensitive skin, you do want to think about your skin's microbiome because that's your first defense to fighting off that irritation and those flares. Ups. So what about skincare? Can that help your microbiome? Well, the short answer is yes. Um, definitely you can apply topical skincare that is going to help your skin microbiome. I want to say this like over and over and over again, but this is an emerging area of research. Like we're just starting to understand the microbiome on the skin and we're just starting to understand what skincare can do to the microbiome. So always take all of this with a grain of salt, not just what I'm saying, but what you're hearing, especially in marketing from brands. I'm not saying that, you know, it's all crap and they're lying to you. That's not what I'm saying at all, but I just think it's good to be an informed consumer and understand that a lot of the claims around microbiome skincare, pre and probiotic skincare, it's a little shaky because we're just starting to understand things and nothing is standardized. Um, there are no standardized claims um, for microbiome skincare. So just take everything with a grain of salt and be curious and keep learning. But yes, skincare can help to promote a healthy microbiome. The way that you do it is using a skincare ingredients that are pre or probiotic, particularly um, prebiotic skincare helps to 
feed the good bacteria and the good microorganisms in your microbiome to help them flourish so that you have a really good balance of all those really good beneficial microorganisms working to your benefit. And the way that shows up on your skin is a reduction in redness, less inflammation on the skin. It helps to fight acne. It helps with your well aging goals. It can also help with dehydration and dryness on the skin because as we move further into the video, you're going to deeply understand how the microbiome is the first defense of your overall skin barrier defense. And that's what helps to keep hydration into your skin and keep it from escaping from your moisture barrier, from that lipid layer um, and causing transepidermal water loss. Your microbiome actually does have a role to play in that. And so it can actually help to address the signs of dehydration and dryness. So you definitely want to look for some prebiotic ingredients. You can find them in plant sugars like xylitol and rhamnose. It's also found in fructo oligosaccharides, and it can also be found in extracts of oat, wheat, bran, onions, and you can find it in the ingredient inulin. So there's a few skincare products that I can recommend to get you started on your microbiome journey. And the first one is the Rovectin Forever Young Biome Ampule. Now I really like this one because we do have some prebiotics in here, but we also have some probiotics. I think it's nice to have a mixture of those because the probiotics help to support the prebiotics. So the probiotics in here, there's a couple different ones, but we do have bifida ferment lysate, which is actually really good to help support your skin's moisture barrier, that lipid layer. And then we also have two prebiotics in here in the form of fructo oligosaccharide and xylose. So the texture is a hydrating gel texture. It's pretty light on the skin and it's not sticky or tacky. It's got really good absorbency and it definitely does have like a deep hydrating factor to it. So I think if, especially if you're somebody who is struggling with dehydration and are curious about like, what would like microbiome skincare do to help me with my dehydration, this could be an especially good one for you because it's got that deeply hydrating benefit to it, along with all of those great uh, fermented ingredients, the pre and probiotic ingredients. We have a little bit of niacinamide in here. Whenever I use this, my skin just looks so healthy that lit from within kind of glow. I'm not really talking about like fading dark marks, although there's a good brightening benefit to this that I think you would get over time. But I'm talking about like drink all the water, ate all the fruits and vegetables. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of lit from within healthy glow. This serum delivers time and time again. And the more I learn about the skin microbiome, the more that seems to click in my mind and make sense why this serum gives me that benefit because it really is feeding the skin microbiome. I also want to shout out thermal water. This is a real classic ingredient in French pharmacy brands like La Roche-Posay and Avene. I've said it before, it is really so much more than just fancy water. Thermal water does actually have a high content of minerals in it, and it has been found that those minerals do have pre and probiotic properties to it, meaning that thermal water actually helps uh, to promote a healthy microbiome on the skin, which is super important. So um, this could be a good area for you to look into if you're on that microbiome journey, um, a lot of French pharmacy uh, skincare does contain thermal water. You can get it straight in a can. <laughs> I really like the La Roche-Posay Thermal Spring Water Mist just to get that little hit. And what's interesting about this is it's um, got a little hydration to it, but I find as I'm using this in my routine, my skin is less red. It is less sensitive. It has like kind of a calming property to it. But you'll also find thermal water in some of their other products throughout the La Roche-Posay line, like the Tolerane Double Repair Moisturizer. All right, let's talk about the acid mantle next. Now, you know, you always hear me talk about the pH of skin being 5.5 and how it's really important to respect that. What we are respecting is the acid mantle. What this is, this is a fine layer uh, on your skin that is slightly acidic. And that's where we get the pH of 5.5. And that's why we're trying to mimic that pH with um, our cleansers and a lot of our skincare because that pH helps to maintain the healthy uh, microorganisms in your microbiome. So that's why the pH is so important. That's why you hear people talking about it so much. That pH actually helps to support 
your individual um, very unique microbiome, that pH is really important. And you know, it, it can fluctuate definitely. It doesn't have to be right on 5.5. Um, so some studies actually say that the pH is maybe even a little bit lower, closer to four. Some studies suggest that you can go all the way up to like seven. But really what I'm here to tell you is don't go past that. <laughs> there are actually some cleansers on the market that tested a pH of like nine and 10. You have to stay away from that type of skincare if you're thinking about your microbiome because when you raise the pH of your skin from that slightly acidic environment to a more alkaline type of environment, it strips away the acid mantle. That very fine film on your skin strips it away. When we talk about cleansing, like harsh cleansing, and it's like, oh, you get that squeaky clean kind of feeling, that stripped feeling on your skin, that's your acid mantle going away. Uh, it comes back, but it is not good, right? If we're talking about supporting a healthy microbiome. And that's why gentle cleansing is so important. When you respect the pH of your skin, you are intimately respecting your skin's microbiome. And when you do that, you really allow those good microorganisms to flourish on your skin. And I mean, we're talking fighting acne, redness, inflammation, dryness, dehydration, irritation, sensitivity, um, it's even going to be really important for eczema and psoriasis. I know I've said this before, but I really want to underline why this is so important. Everything is connected. So I do want to recommend some cleansers for you. I did just do a video where I rounded up some um, of my current favorites. I'm gonna link that for you right up here so I don't make this video too long. And let's talk about the lipid layer, also referred to as the stratum corneum, also collectively referred to as the moisture barrier. So I talk about this a lot on my channel. I feel like you're already in the know of how to take care of your moisture barrier, but I'm gonna go over a few key, like important things to always keep in the back of your mind if you are working towards healthy, strong skin. And the first one is finding that healthy balance of exfoliation for your individual skin. I cannot stress this enough. It is individual. And as we've learned about the microbiome, we've learned how individual our skin really is. So I can't tell you just do it two, three times a week because that may not work for you. Some people can exfoliate every single day. Some people can only exfoliate once a week and most of us fall somewhere in the middle, right? So it's about finding out that healthy balance for you and really tuning into your skin tuition. It's gonna take time, you might make some mistakes, but know that mistakes and like failures, so to speak, are actually just knowledge that we gain and help us make uh, better choices in the future for our skin. We're just gaining information about what works for us. So don't feel too bad if you've over exfoliated in the past, I'm sure. I've definitely done it a couple of times, <laughs> more than a couple of times. I've even damaged my moisture barrier, right? There's nothing to be ashamed of. We all do it. Um, but as long as we bounce back from it with information and make better choices in the future, that's what really hones in your skin tuition. It's also important to remember that outside factors, not just the skincare you put on your face, can affect your skin's moisture barrier. Um, changes in environment, um, especially if you're going like from a humid environment to a very dry environment, you might notice a change in your barrier function or your lipid layer. Um, that can also be the case too when you're in um, indoors a lot with like very intense air conditioning or intense heating that can dry the air out. Changes in season um, can definitely um, create changes in your lipid layer. Um, lots of UV exposure. Again, we're starting to see the connections here with the microbiome, but it is also important to remember that some people are just genetically a little bit deficient in their lipid layer. Um, some people just don't produce as many lipids to begin with. And actually, as we get older, um, the lipids that we are producing um, tend to decrease as we get older, which is why there is a little bit of a link um, with older age and drier skin. It doesn't mean your skin gets super dry, but it just means you might notice it is a little bit drier over time. That's because your lipid layer is a little bit deficient. So what do you do for skincare to replenish that lipid layer? Well, you know what I'm about to say. It's the holy trinity of ingredients. Say it with me. 
ceramides, cholesterol, fatty acids. These are the three main lipids that make up your lipid layer. Um, they are crucially important to that barrier function. And when the lipid layer is a deficient, this is what goes in and kind of fills up those gaps in your barrier, so to speak. So these are very important for building back a strong, healthy moisture barrier. So um, I do have lots of videos on this. I'm not going to go through all of my recommendations. I will link another video for you guys and I'll put it in the description box too for you. Um, another video right up here about some of my favorite ceramide based skincare. Um, but I'm going to just shout out a few of my hero products right now, which include Stradia Liquid Gold. Um, I also really like the RNW Ceramide Serum. Um, I really like to get a good hit of just fatty acids. I love the Ordinary Chia Seed Oil. It's really nourishing and replenishing to the lipid layer. And another one is Stradia Fortify, which has so many great omega-3, 6, and 9 fatty acids that really get into that lipid layer and help support it. And one of the best ways to protect not just your lipid layer, but your acid mantle and your microbiome too. The whole package, the TP total package protection step is, can you guess? Yeah, it's sunscreen. <laughs> of course it is. It's always sunscreen, right? It always comes back to sunscreen. But as we've gone through the video, you've started to notice all of the themes and the similarities, right? About how UV can affect your microbiome and your lipid layer and how a lot of the side effects are the same, right? So sunscreen really is one of the best ways to protect the total package, right? And I have to mention it um, because it is really important for healthy skin. So I hope this video helped you understand how the microbiome, the acid mantle, and the lipid layer all come together to help create that protective barrier on your skin and really help to create healthy skin and why they don't just exist in bubbles, but why they are all interconnected and they all deserve your attention in your skincare routine. So if you did enjoy the video, let me know. What do you think in the comment box below all your thoughts? If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like this from me, uh, please do consider hitting subscribe if you have not already. And I do release a lot of content throughout the week. I'm very active on YouTube. So if you want to consider turning on notifications too, you will never be out of the loop when I drop the new content. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.